Hey guys, it's Vince. Today we are continuing with part 7 of my CNC controllers built incorrectly series. I'm still getting lots of emails with guys thanking me for the information being readily available. Again, if you haven't checked out the series, start from part 1. And once again, we'll continue this until you guys feel it no longer useful. Let's jump right in. I'll let you guys all guess what he's building. All the glue squeeze out was removed once the box dried out. Can you Can you guys guess what this is made out of? And of course, we know that this is his electronics enclosure, which discussed in previous videos, you guys can go back from when I started the series, we all should know we shouldn't use any flammable materials for electronic enclosures. Now, this compilation video is very interesting, what you're about to see, because most of these channels have thousands of subscribers, which means people are watching these videos and saying, this looks like he knows what he's doing. Pretty scary, guys. I'm going to build this step kind of design in which I can secure each of the stepper motor drivers. But it's kind of silly, so I will not show it here. For the front panel, I made the... Have you ever heard anyone said they're not going to show you how silly their design is? First time for me. Cutouts for switches before gluing that into place. You can see that I have chamfered the edge place. You can see that I have chamfered the edges so that they sit flush to the edge of the box. And again, Brad nails to hold it in place. For the connectors at the back side, I have 3D printed this cover. I can draw the outer line and cut off the MDF. This no exaggeration, I definitely feel the cover that he 3D printed is the highest quality component for this enclosure. Even though the cutout is bad, the cover plate will make it look good. After giving a thorough sanding, I can spray paint it in black color. Then I can put in the emergency switch and other components required on the cutouts. And the back plate goes like this. Once all the wiring... Okay, guys. This is probably the pinnacle of this video. We saw him here go through and build this enclosure with glue and brads, as if he was more or less building a cabinet. And what he actually did here is solder. And you can see there's no flux used here because you can see there's not a proper joint formed. This is the power in to this enclosure, the IEC port. No heat shrink, guys. I mean, I really want you to think about what these videos are showing you. And you know what's interesting? These videos are all over. Whether it's a new video, whether it's an old video, that's why this compilation I'm doing is interesting because these are showing you how minds think and what these minds possess in knowledge. Something told this gentleman that this makes sense. Electricity that is flowing through this connector without insulation in a wood box spray painted makes sense to him. I want you to think about that. This is who is showing you what he built and is showing you in a sense that he's proud of it. This is what we need to be careful with, guys. Because if you think State Farm or Progressive or Geico or whatever insurance company you use to insure your building, your home, and I've said this in many videos, is not going to look at something like this, if God forbid there's a fire, you are sadly mistaken. Be very careful of who and what you're watching. 
look at this wiring mess that we have here. I don't even know how else to put it. We've got a jumper wire coming into a terminal with multiple connections. I mean, this is, once again, the epitome of what these videos are made to discuss. And it's just frightening to me. And it's not that we know end users can't do this right without the right experience. This is simply not it. A four mm sheet of clear acrylic will cover the top. It is secured with screws. Because like a computer case, it's important to be able to see your components. We're trying to make it like a gaming computer. Then there is no chance I can separate them later. At least I hope this. Okay, guys, just to clarify what we're looking at here, because this is going to interest many of you, these are servo drives. I know many guys out there go crazy about, I want to buy servo drives. They're so much better than Stepper. Here's what's interesting about and this video and is ironic. This is the manufacturer of these drives sponsoring this video. And I'll state that again. This is the manufacturer doing a video of their own drives. And they are inserting two leads inside a single point terminal block. And what you're seeing here is not best practice. So what's interesting is it's not an isolated field where we only see incorrect practices being done by end users. We see this kind of misinformation being done all over online. And what you're actually seeing is a daisy chain effect. So continue to see exactly what he's doing. There we go again with the daisy chaining. Now, the proper way to do multiple drive wiring, but he doesn't want to do that because it's going to take too much precious time to do it right, or he doesn't know, is the fact that you would use a terminal splitter. And go to each one of these drives, and using the terminal splitter, it would allow the end user, including himself, to isolate each drive individually should there be a problem. That's best practice. What you're seeing here is not making any sense other than allowing him to go quick through wiring this controller, which is interesting. You think that they would look at this and say, hey, we want to give you guys the best information. When I tell you question everything, there is no lie. Check this out. Notice no rules. No tinned ends, nothing. What do you think is going to happen if he goes to remove that connector? And I'm talking about the lead itself and go to reinsert it. You're going to have nothing but frayed wires everywhere. You can use either a ferrule or a ferrule that's soldered on, which I prefer, or a tin connector, which I also prefer. It works excellent. Just like he just seen there with the fray. There goes the daisy chain once again. Here we go. Two leads, two leads, two leads, one lead. So look at these videos, guys, and take heed on what you're seeing. I'm not making this up. This is a drive manufacturer. In this case, they are servo drives. You can see that here. And it's just interesting to me, as it should be to you, to see this from a vendor, the actual manufacturer doing this.
it's time to spice things up with some high voltage stuff. Actually, it's as high as 325 volts. Each motor drive got three wires from power supply, and these are positive, negative, and earth. So you guys just heard he's spicing things up with high voltage uh, electricity at 320 volts. I want you to think about, again, essentially you're playing with a connector that's carrying over 300 volts, and we're not even terminating that right. Does that make any sense? Think about that. On power brick, there are four separate sockets for one for each drive. It again makes connecting drives easier. This way you do not need to gram multiple cables to one terminal or use separate terminal block to divide one connection to multiple cables. It's interesting he said that because that's just what we discussed here, isn't it? They were smart enough to, once again, take this power supply unit and make a terminal splitter built into it for each individual drive. Total sense. But they didn't do it here. Think about what you just heard. And just remember, guys, any points of entry there, any point where this is not insulated inside that terminal block, you can see a little copper there, a little copper there, that's over 300 volts of power going to each drive. That's how serious this is. It's not me being technical. It's me being critical of what you're working with. You do not want to make contact with that at all on your body. This is an industrial rated system. Each drive, I believe, is 750 watts. That's no joke, guys. Okay? So when you see stuff like this, they're just getting it done. they got to get their content out. Think about what you're seeing here. It allows me to seamlessly link PNP type sensor. Once again, we got all our jumper leads here. And these are fine to use as long as we're not using tandem terminals. And what you see here, when I say tandem terminals, we're not using tandem leads inserted inside of a terminal. And you can see that right here. You can see that right here. You can see that right here. This is not best practice and should not be done. Again, would be to use a terminal splitter and therefore wire one terminal at a time into each of the required terminals. This takes longer. This takes more time. This is not as quick as him just doing the typical skin the lead and just insert it, which is all he's doing right now. And just to be clear, why guys do this is for content. Okay, guys, that wraps up part seven of the new series, CNC Control is Built Incorrectly. Stay tuned for next week. I'll definitely have another video out, and I want to thank everybody for their support. The channel has been growing absolutely crazily. Shop is really busy. I'm doing my best to get back to everyone as soon as possible. Thank you for your patience. Take care.